to tell everybody that please don't ever give up hope on finding your family. It took me 62 years to find my brother, but I did it. When I was five years old, my mother was pregnant. She went to the hospital and she came home and she had a little baby boy in her arms. She put him in my arms and he was beautiful. And I kissed him and I hugged him and she said his name was George. And I never forgot him. She took him out of my arms and she went away. And when she came back, the ba there was no baby with her. It hurt me so bad that something had happened to my brother, but I was still too young to understand what had happened. I didn't learn for years later what she had done. But even though I was small, I still remembered that little face and the blonde hair and the big blue eyes looking at me. And I vowed that someday I would find him. And, and it chokes me up to talk about it, but I have to, because I want everybody out there that is looking for their family to, to never give up, don't give up. It may take a few months, it may take a few years, it may take longer than that, but don't ever give up hope. When I got older and I got married and I had my children and I still thought about my baby brother, but I had children, seven children to raise, so they came first. When they went out of the home, then I could think about my brother again and that's when I decided that I was gonna look for him. I put his name on the internet, um, missing persons. Um, I did everything and all I had to go by was Baby Boy Brown, July 16th, 1945, that's all I had. And I knew at that time that he probably was adopted and his whole name was probably taken and they probably gave him a whole new name, first and last name. So even though I knew that, I still put his address, his, his birth date and where he was born on the internet. And I waited and waited and waited and years went by and years went by and nothing. Then a few years ago, um, I contacted diabetes and I was also adopted. My mother also um, gave me away shortly after she gave my brother away. And I contacted um, the courthouse where I live and I wanted my, my real birth certificate unsealed and brought to me. So I could find out who my father was first and because I had illness, an illness, I wanted to also find out about my, if there was anything in there about my brother. A week later I got, they unsealed my birth certificate and I read who my father was and then they sent me an 18 page about the family. 18 pages on the family. And lo and behold, there was my brother's name on the paper. Um, I called up the state and I asked for a social worker to help me find my brother. And she tried and tried to find him, but she couldn't because of his name changed. But she kept on saying that she would help me and I would help myself at the same time. And three years after that, she said that she thinks that she had found my brother. And she, was, she had to ask him first if, um, if he wanted to talk to me. Well, he didn't even know he had a family. He didn't know he had a sister. He didn't know nothing about us. But he said, yes, I wanna talk to her. So 
he called me up one night and he said, hello, this is George, I am your brother. And I cried and cried and cried and I was so happy and so happy and relieved that that I didn't have to look for him anymore, that he, that I, he was found. He lived he lives in Oregon, and I lived in Massachusetts at the time. But we talked and talked for hours on the phone, and two weeks later he came down and he visited me, and he stayed for two weeks. And he didn't know anything about his family, and I told him everything that he wanted to know about his family and his mother. We both had the same mother and father. And he went home, and he had his... Um, his birth certificate unsealed also. And he had the same thing on his that I had on mine, so we knew that we were brother and sister. Um, it, it's amazing, it, it, was, it was just amazing. I can't, I can't describe it in words how I felt when I talked to him on the phone. I can't describe how I felt when I seen him in person. We looked so much alike. and. He never knew about me, but I knew about him. And I sat and he asked me so many questions. There were so many questions he had to ask me about the family, about his aunts and uncles and grandmother and so on and so forth. And I told him everything because I was adopted into the same, into the same family. Um, I was not adopted outside the family, so I could tell him everything that he wanted to know. And where I am so glad I found him. And I'm getting all choked up again because every time I think about it, it just, the family book is now closed. This is the way I look at it. And he's with me now. I mean, he still lives in Oregon, but we talk all the time on the internet. We talk on the phone. And he's going to come down this summer and visit me again. Um, I would love to come and visit him, but I have a fear of airplanes, so I can't go. But he's, he knows that, so he's going to come down and see me again. <clears throat> I feel this way. Even if you find a family member and they don't want to talk with you or they decide it, they, they just don't want to have anything to do with you, that's okay. That's all right. You found them, at least you found them, at least you know where they are, <clears throat> and at least you, you tried. But <clears throat> I, I would say that 80% of the people want to be found. 80% want to be found. Brothers, sisters, mothers, fathers, aunts, uncles, they all want to be found. So if you, like I said, if you have somebody out there that, that you're, you've been looking for, don't stop looking. Keep on going. Keep on looking and looking. Do anything you have to do. Go on the internet. Ask people. Put things in the paper. I even put his name in the papers, in different papers, to see if anybody knew him. I, I did everything. I couldn't, I can't, <clears throat> I can't um, think of all the things I did, but <clears throat> it worked, and um, I'm so happy that it did. But um, a lot of people would say, don't look for your loved ones because you're going to get hurt because they probably don't want to see you. Well, yes, you probably would feel hurt if they don't want to see you, but that's on them. That has nothing to do with you. And at least you know where they are, and at least you found them, and at least you're at rest and at peace, and you don't have to think about it the rest of your life, where they are or, or who they are or what they look like or whatever. So I just wanted to say, don't ever stop looking for your, for your family. Family's first, family comes first, and, and they might have reasons why they had to do what they had to do. I found out later in life that, <clears throat> that my mother had a reason why she had to give my brother up and give me up. Um, <clears throat> but for a long time, I, um, I, disliked, I, I disliked my mother for what she did, but when I found out the reason, then I, I didn't dislike her anymore. I understood.